Dr. Gypsy Rainey is a consultant in systems improvement and statistical methodology. She continues to work with the General Motors Powertrain Group, where she was director of statistical methodology. She's also a former professor at the University of Tennessee. She will discuss Deming's theory as a conceptual system for interpreting experience. But first, we'll see some video clips of former Ford CEO Don Peterson. One of the key moments in the adapt adoption of the quality movement in North America was when Peterson realized and understood that the key to success was a new way to think and not a list of things to do. Make sure you're understanding the potential total scope of the qu apparently simple questions uh, Dr. Deming asks, asks, uh, asks you. Um, because he may put you off. He may lead you to think he's just a simple old gentleman uh, that there's not any particular reason to listen to, and you're going to be badly wrong. Dr. Deming is an individual with a magnificent overall concept of managing enterprise, whether it's business or I, I think it's applicable to any enterprise. Um, so his questions and his concepts and his 14 points that uh, Dr. Deming articulates so very well did a wonderful job of initiating and agitating the thought processes among a wide array of people at Ford and Water Company that caught, helped us start the introspection, all of the soul searching and rethinking of how we want to function that uh, then led to our coming to a conclusion of how should we apply his ideas to the specific uh, elements, this specific unique area, uh, nature and quality of this great Ford Motor Company. In the film clip we just saw, we caught a glimpse of something that Mr. Peterson understood far better uh, than most of us did in the early 80s, that Deming had created a magnificent overall concept of managing enterprise. Mr. Peterson's clear view of the global nature of Deming's ideas was quite remarkable then, and it still is, when it comes to business executives. Many of us have had to catch up over the last decade to where Peterson was then. We thought this was all about improving quality of manufactured product. Later we learned that ideas about quality extended to services and to education and to government, as we've heard so well today. As we plodded along behind, Dr. Deming was moving ahead to clarify his fundamental concepts and lay them out in what he called the system of profound knowledge. Ron described the components of that system of profound knowledge to you earlier, and he did make a very important part, point there, and that is that the interactions amongst the components may be the most important contribution that there is in the system of profound knowledge. Altogether, that system of ideas creates a means to interpret experience and to act to improve the future. Many people understand that those ideas apply to life at work, but I wonder whether we understand how global the concepts are. There are examples for application of Deming's theory everywhere in our lives. In these next few minutes, I'll mention some of those. And I would ask you to look at what I say as illustrating the tremendous opportunity for improvement that we can all contribute to. Good management calls for appreciation for a system, as we've heard, including understanding the benefits of cooperation amongst parties with common purpose and the damaging effects of win-lose structures. If we take appreciation for a system seriously, we can't go home from work and forget the notion of win-win and perpetuate win-lose structures in our family lives. After all, the family is just as much a human system as a business is. Suppose we look at our community as a system. We see real estate developers, for instance, becoming wealthy by aiding mass exodus to the suburbs. 
As a result, local governments spend fortunes building new roads, new water and sewer systems, new schools, while people in older neighborhoods pay the freight. This is not an everybody gains over the long term structure. What about the powerful corporate citizens in a community telling its hospitals that a contest for survival will be held? This is an actual case. Hospitals will be ranked according to their standing on various indicators, and the hospitals on the bottom will be destroyed by withdrawal of support. Why could these corporations, who claim to understand quality, not help the hospitals learn better how to manage and how to work together to improve the system of health care for the entire community? Rather than trying to manage by results, and by fear tactics. Deming's ideas about systems, and this has been said many times before today, apply to families and to communities as well as to business enterprise. At the federal level, competition among special interests has become the order of the day. We seem to have lost sight of the notion somewhere along the way that democracy without knowledge and without common purpose may be no better than monarchy or dictatorship. I was interested to hear a judge discussing the crime bill recently and showing a better understanding of a system than the legislators who passed the crime bill, for sure. He predicted that three or four years from now, we'll wake up and see our criminal courts choked with cases because there was no provision in the bill for the increase in caseloads that will come about as a result of the legislation. Deming also taught us that good management requires knowledge about variation. There's such a thing as variation produced by causes inherent to a system and to its inputs, designed into the system, in other words. We learn from Deming's funnel experiment that action in response to each outcome could make things worse rather than to bring about improvement. Do you think we have some large-scale funnels at work in this country? What about case law in our legal system? Think about that as a potential funnel. Or legislation in Congress. Do you suppose there's such a thing as tampering when it comes to interest rates? We all can think about actions of government and economic leaders in light of Deming's theory. Knowledge about variation and systems of causes leads us to understand that it's not rational to explain, in terms of a single cause, each fluctuation in a series of results. Some business leaders, precious few of them, have learned to stop asking people to explain why overtime expense or costs or profits or variance to budget went up or down last month when the fluctuations in those results show stable variation. What about application of those ideas to other arenas? What about to the news reports that come at us every day? What about the explanations on the financial page for daily fluctuations in the stock market, such as the Dow Jones dropped 10 points today because investors were worried about the next crop of lychee nuts in Bora Bora? <laughs> what about the same kinds of reports on the network news? Claire and Lloyd, you have a mission, should you choose to accept it, <laughs> to help your colleagues learn about variation. Deming spoke of delayed effects in systems. Actions taken today may not have their effects on the results until long in the future. And we learned that exercise is to go there and see what they're doing that makes them successful may make for a bestseller but it will not produce any understanding of what constitutes good business practice if we have no theory to interpret what we see. The lesson in that is that theory and application are inseparable. Simply copying a company that appears to be successful by short-term measures or copying the winner of a quality award is dangerous practice. We should always be learning, that is, scanning the environment but with theory to interpret what we see. I think you'll hear some more about that one later, maybe. 
Dr. Deming taught also about the destructive effects of pay for performance and other systems of extrinsic reward. Those ideas have caused organizations to rethink their systems of rewards, yet people in those same organizations go home and pay their children to do their homework and to get good grades. Then they wonder why children don't seem to be interested in learning. As a university prof professor, before I learned from Dr. Deming, I was disturbed by the most frequent question asked in the classroom, at least in the undergraduate classroom, and that was, is this going to be on the test? And what that question implied about students' genuine interest in learning. Then I studied Deming's teachings, and I heard a very powerful remark from Rob Roden of Marshall Industries, and that was, people act rational to the system we create for them. And it became very clear to me that students' behavior was rational to the educational system that we as educators, parents, and citizens of communities had created. We'd made good grades the primary aim for students, never mind how they got them, and never mind their effect on their desire to, desire to learn. Dr. Deming saw the importance of understanding psychology to good management. He spoke of the tyranny of Western style of management. I see trends toward more tyranny in the form of control systems, security systems, electronic surveillance of employees that are founded on mistrust and shout to people that they can't be trusted and they have to be treated like criminals. This is going on in a country that claims to value freedom ab above all else. Many of <laughs> Thank you. Many of those practices come about because of analyses of failure that focus on people and ignore existence of any other factors. So many of our causal explanations boil down to blaming every unfortunate event on the people who happen to be in the same place at the same time as the event. We conduct diligent searches for the root who. <laughs> in the New Economics, Dr. Deming writes, every suit for malpractice in medicine or in engineering or accounting implicates the event to a special cause. Somebody was at fault. Study with the aid of a bit of knowledge about variation leads to a different conclusion. The event could well have come from the process itself. It could have been built in, guaranteed. Do we not have the right and responsibility to question these things and to offer alternatives? Deming provided a conceptual framework to interpret experience, not only in business enterprise, but in our lives outside the workplace. Deming's theory, as Nita Bakaitis and Mike Twidey put it, is a lens to view the landscape of experience. There are almost unlimited new perspectives that come from the use of this lens, and boundless opportunities to learn more and to bring those learnings to our roles as citizens. The tyranny of Western style of management has the effect of creating dependency and a feeling of powerlessness. Over the years, I've seen many people react to Deming's teachings by saying, it's the system, I can't do anything about it. But no matter what our circumstances, there's always an opportunity to share a different view with others, friends, neighbors, business associates, newspaper editors, elected representatives. We all have the opportunity and the right to be active in community groups and the political process and to influence the thinking that goes into the decisions that affect all of us. Dr. Deming had a mission that didn't stop with his passing. It was to enrich life and to restore to the individual joy in work and in life. To close, I'll quote from a document authored by his daughters, Diana Deming Cahill and Linda Deming Ratcliffe. In November 1993, our father established the W. Edward Deming Institute. The aim of the Institute is to foster understanding of the Deming system of profound knowledge to advance commerce, prosperity, and peace. With the help and efforts of those committed to this aim, we strive to carry on his legacy. More than 200 people with a commitment to carry on Deming's work attended the first Institute planning conference in Washington, Washington on September 17th. 
Dr. Deming's legacy of pursuit of knowledge and transformation lives on after him in the Institute and in all of those who contribute to that legacy by continuing to learn and apply Dr. Deming's teachings.